summary of Mass Effect 3 endings. Hello, my name is Gabriel and as I promised, this video will be a summary for Mass Effect 3 ending that I experienced at last. At the beginning I must say I am not satisfied with the ending of Mass Effect 3. In a way, it's not what we all expected, but I don't think that what I will point out are the same reasons other gamers are trying to emphasize during the rage videos that jumped on us half a year ago. One important thing, I watched the ending with the extended cut DLC already in place because I bought and played the game after this DLC pack was released. So my first impression was that much richer than others, and I must say it was much more fortunate for me. I do hope it spared me some disappointment. My critic has two lines of arguments, formal line and material line. In other words, I have analyzed the structure of the endgame sequence and analyzed the actual story and all of the colored variations of the ending. As always, since this material is what it is, there is a big spoiler warning here, so if you haven't played the game, play it and then watch it. Thank you very much. Now, let's start this. Four choice form of the ending. So, here is my argumentation on the fact that we are presented with final four possibility choice instead of the promised epic ending. Bioware from the beginning was all about Mass Effect's consequence system. The ending that was promised was also a big part of this topic. We were promised a multi branched ending with reflections on every possible big decision from all three games. But really, can you imagine the team creating this level of complexity? The fact that Mass Effect 2 imported save contains over 1000 different variables implicates that the amount of possibilities is extreme. If you ever put this into calculating, you end up with around few hundred thousands of possibilities. Here you have a small concept schematic of my own game done using RPG Maker series. This is just a three path game. The project was never actually finished. But imagine as much bigger must be the Mass Effect with all the variables combined. A huge system must govern this. Imagine the sheer logical scope of the trilogy. In a way I understand that the developer team at Bioware had to make a very difficult decision when it comes to the ending. So in Mass Effect series, it is overall the number of worlds you can create by playing the game. It is so extreme, so rich, and th th this builds the uniqueness of the game. Bioware did one thing from the start, this assumption we will make a game with tremendous amount of possibilities. This assumption was unrealistic to create with the framework and resources they decided to put into the project. I fear that the ending we'd like to see could easily be in development only on paper, not in the game, for a year or two, and from a business perspective this is unacceptable. So I believe we got a very compromised solution between an unachievable multi-branch and multi-layered ending and a single ending, which I don't actually believe anyone at Bioraven took into consideration. And it was obvious Bioware will strive to at least have an acceptable answer to this problem that was created with the ambition that Mass Effect had as a project in general. Shepard's death in all endings. Okay, it seems a lot of people are raged by the fact that all endings contain the death of the protagonist. I don't really have a problem with that. Bioware wanted to get away from what I know as the Sherlock Holmes issue. When Arthur Conan Doyle was writing books about Sherlock Holmes, each time he published one, he was harassed by people to make more. So in one of the last confrontations, it is left unclear, is Holmes dead or is he alive? It is the same with Mass Effect. If Shepard was left alive, it's obvious the fans will chant, Make another Shepard game! Make another Shepard game! 
Not to mention, it is a reasonable uh, situation and a reasonable finish that the Reaper War has to be ended with the final sacrifice. And it is also typical, and I won't argue with that, that it is the protagonist who makes uh, the sacrifice himself. So the quest is finished with the fact that Commander made it possible for the galaxy to move forward. Control Ending The ending that Elusive Man pushed for can be summarized in the line Break the chain with the chain. You reprogram the Reaper so it's possible to create the future with them as a tool. It's a good ending and one that makes it possible for Shepard to live as a mind able to influence the galaxy with the use of the tool, the Reapers. Destruction ending. This one leaves the question what will happen in the future? Reapers are destroyed, but along with them all other synthetical life, ED for example. Also, it's possible that the galactic community in the near future will build a new machine or new machines and the war will continue. Shepard dies as he or she was rebuilt it with the cybernetic implants. This is a good ending. It ends the conflict in a way that the game really strives to. Anderson is the character, of course, that supports this ending. It's also possible that this one will become a canonical ending, mainly because the diversity and the world, the galaxy, stays quite intact. Synthesis ending. From all given possibilities, I think this one is the ideal solution. It ends the extinction cycle, it opens new possibilities and unites all life as we know it in one form. It's also best for all other characters. ED stays alive. Joker might be cured, his physical weakness can be quite easily eliminated, I believe. The same goes for Quarians, the immune system is not a problem anymore, every individual might even be immortal, or who knows, this ending has endless possibilities. Shepard might also be in some way present in all life as we know it, since he or she adds the very essence of oneself to make this change possible. The Refusal The bad one, to be more precise. If you decide to use this one, the cycle continues, and there is no real change, unless you count the post credit Stargazer sequence. In this one, Liara's time capsule is a very nice emotional touch. <laughs> but let's be serious, we haven't played three games to be in this point. The problem with the color sequences is that they are actually lazy, in fact. If Bioware limited the ending to such a level that we are presented with four choices, I think that we deserved something more at the epilogue than just fewer monologues. One or two cutscenes would be ten times better, I think. The Child And so we are at the most awkward part of the ending. Till the moment that appeared, I was committed with all my mind and heart to see the end. I will say, till the dialogue with Anderson and indoctrinated elusive man, I really was playing with admiration, and the child just throws off balance the emotions and sublimity of the grand finale. This is a big problem. 
I recall only two games that were able to really use a child as a valid and improving the quality component. First one, Icewind Dale. In the dungeon named the Dragon's Eye, in the fifth level I believe, you encounter a small girl that finally reveals to be the boss. The dialogue with her when you clear the dungeon is a very nice stage and was pure entertainment. Second game, or rather a series of games, is the Fear Horror Games, F-E-A-R. This little girl, later a teenager named Alma, just freaks everyone all the time. So it's just perfect to use a child in such a game like this. In Mass Effect the problem with this boy is quite visible. The strongest part of the game, of all Mass Effect games, can you ask yourself what is it? It is the emotional bond that tricks you, tricks the player, that you care about the NPCs, you care about the characters that exist in the game. I had a great dilemma. What to do on Ranoch, the Quarian homeworld? Kill the Geth or kill the Quarians? Allow Tally to make the suicide jump? Another one, when I saw Liara emotionally unstable after Thessian mission, or I talked with Ashley in the hospital, all of these are really strong points of the game, or strong points of the series. The boy has no such responding experience. We barely know him. We talked with him for less than a minute, we saw him die, but we have no real reason to care about him. Plus, why this weird AI that controls the Reapers? I don't actually have a problem with the AI. I have a problem why this AI that controls the Reapers decides to show as this boy. I have no idea why. It just interferes with the ending, with all of its solemnity. Oh, and the dream sequences. I like them. The whispers of the fallen comrades, you know, unknown, misty forest. But the boy just feels out of place in here as well. I can say every NPC would be better to do the clarification in the ending. I say even, I dare to say, I dare to say, anyone who's dead, anyone who I really care about would be better. I gave it a lot of thought, and if it was my decision, I'd put there Ashley or Caden, depending on who died on Vermeer. This concludes my summary of Mass Effect 3 ending sequence. I must say I'm troubled from emotional side, but my mind is more or less understanding towards the developer. I know how hard it is to see if a project you are in fails to deliver what was promised. Bioware, in my opinion, made two mistakes. They put the bar too high, even for them, with the promise that every choice will be reflected in the ending. They as well refused to finally recognize that this was an integrated risk that they had to take and that they failed. At least that is how I see it. Next time, I hope to talk about my opinion on the future of Mass Effect series considering a week ago or two Casey Hudson tweeted that he would like to have a positive feedback from the community on what we would like to see the Mass Effect universe, what we would like to see uh, the general direction. I hope this was a nice time for you to listen to my arguments. If you agree with my points or disagree, feel free to comment section down below. You might also like to sub for more or just rate the video. Thank you very much for listening, my name is Gabriel and I hope to hear from you soon and I hope uh, that you consider this time spent with this video uh, a positive experience. See ya!